This is the second part of the series. We're returning to the pasture and uh, painting has dried off. You can see the color is dried quite light. Some nice textures in the foreground. The clouds look like clouds and the, the gray is settled in. Now I'm working on painting the uh, trees that are in the distance. Uh, you can see I'm using the side of the brush and getting kind of a, a rounded texture to the top using a, a little denser green made with cadmium yellow, a little bit of neutral tint and some burnt sienna, also some blue. The edge is, is important. I've got a flat edge that kind of interlocks with the, the field. While this green is still wet, I'm adding a little bit of a darker green to give some shadows to those trees and some feeling of form. Putting a few more trees on the horizon, on the far distance. And now I'm uh, creating the bigger trees, uh, the right side. These trees are closer, they come a little lower in the painting, the, the green itself is a little denser, a little thicker, a little darker. Uh, I'm intending them to be, to feel like they're in shadow, so there's not going to be a strong shadow to the underside of the trees, but rather a, a shadow that looks similar in tonality. Adding now some trunks to those trees, and uh, while we're painting the the trees will add some shadows to the ground so that uh, it connects positively to the ground and then while that shadow on the ground is wet we'll put in some small rectangular shapes. Uh, these will be cl uh, cows at a distance. Cows kind of enjoying the shade on a sunny day. This dark color that's on the trees and on the ground is also helpful to promote the cows in the foreground. This dark sets off uh, the white that we see in the cow and if we're smart we use it right, we place that shadow in a place where it's going to be helpful in the painting. So that's what I'm doing with this. Right now the shadow feels like it's on top of the cow but as I paint the dark parts of the cow uh, it will come forward in, in all of that. Uh, cloud shadows moving across the pasture, some simple linear strokes. It's that type of day where clouds just kind of roll over the, the scene and they cast these long shadows as they move across. I'm adding a little bit of water right now to the body of the cow. I intend to shade them a little bit, place a little bit of a darker color uh, on the underside of the cows. Starting off with a, it looks like neutral tint, it's a mixture of burnt sienna and ultramarine blue, gives a nice strong dark. The paint consistency is quite thick here so that we're putting our strongest dark on top of our lightest light and by doing this we get um, this object appears as it's moving in the foreground coming towards us. I try to, when I'm doing these cows, of course the pattern can be random. I try to think about how it will be best achieved, whether I should leave a dark on top or a light on top, uh, paint the head dark or leave some lights. I, I like to use the blaze or that piece of white on the forehead as an indicator that cow, the cow is looking at us or is facing us. Uh, same with horses, if they have a blaze, it's a real useful visual cue to say uh, this cow's head is visible. The cow behind, this is often a, a tricky point because they tend to pair up in the field or stand in groups and it's hard to tell where one starts and the other finishes, but I'm painting this one with more dark and less white so it should uh, recede against the one that's in the foreground. And as I'm painting the darks of the cow, I make sure I drop some of that into the grass underneath to give us a strong shadow, feeling like they're out in a sunny day. 
So that puts uh, the stars of the show pretty clearly in the painting. And you see they're coming forward. And now we go for some of the smaller cows in the same manner. We're painting a pattern of lights and darks. And we have some freedom to paint this as we wish. Like, uh, you know, in some cases we might paint the cow completely black. It's not unusual to see that. In other cases where we have a clear view, uh, paint it with a little more white. And this is a way to uh, give us variety and and uh, structure the lights and darks in our painting. From here I'm moving cow to cow. Uh, the ones in the distance will be a little trickier because as you get smaller you know the it, it, the marks are more difficult to control and it's harder to get the feeling uh, this is really a cow. The ones in the foreground are a little easier in that sense. Uh, nonetheless, we're moving forward, trying to get a variety of postures. This one is, we're seeing uh, from behind, I believe. Yeah, <laughs> hard to tell, but yeah, we're looking at, at this cow from behind. Uh, all these funny things come up as you're painting animals. Expressions, uh, how to place them in the field next to each other. You want to give them a personality, can you do that? Uh, all this stuff is, I think, fun. And uh, when you're painting um, uh, similar objects, it's a good idea to stagger them at different distances. Here you see we've got cows in the foreground, quite a few in the midground, and some in the far distance. This is all contributing to this feeling of depth in the painting, or the third dimension. The, the dark as it goes back is getting a little bit more water so that it's going to fade off and look a little lighter and the ones in the foreground will gain in intensity. They'll feel a little closer as a result. I'm putting some of that same dark around the stones to give a feeling of uh, grass and a um, feeling of shadows uh, through the pasture. I'm blending some of this so that we get uh, a thicker feel to the grass like the cows are you know, standing in a in a thick, a thick field of grass. Some of the last things that we'll do in this painting are going to be adding touches of white. If we lost a highlight, or we feel that a highlight would be useful uh, to bring the cows out a little more, or or to give them a, a more positive position against each other, the use of white is is absolutely fine. Yeah, these darks that we're putting in now are just giving a, the field a little more texture, a little more interest. The left whites, they could be flowers, they could be stones. Here's some of that white. We're putting it on the back of that cow to pull it forward. If we lost an edge or if we want to exaggerate the blaze of the cow on the forehead, that's a good application, that's a good reason to use the white. Yeah, it's just the finishing touches now. A little bit of white on that front leg. See how that pulls the, the cow forward and gives the stance a little more of a positive feeling. So we're just regaining whites. It's uh, In general, it's a good idea not to use too much white because the painting ends up looking a little chalky. In this case, it just reclaims some highlights. That's it. Mm -hmm.